My name is Christopher Merrill. I direct the International Writing Program at the University of Iowa. And I'm Ed Folsom uh, in the English Department at the University of Iowa and uh, co-director of the online Walt Whitman Archive. This massive online open course, or MOOC, on Walt Whitman grows out of a project that Ed and I have been conducting called the Whitman Web, where over the course of a year we take readers section by section through that signal document of American poetic history, Walt Whitman's Song of Myself. We thought that a course based on the Whitman Web would be uh, a valuable thing to do. That is, what this course really is going to be about is reading an epic length poem, arguably the most influential and important poem in American literature, and reading it carefully and closely, and reading it in the context of um, the multitude of languages that we have it translated into on the Whitman Web. We hope that one thing that uh, all of you will do as you're reading this poem with us is uh, take a look at the translations, listen to the recording of uh, Song of Myself in Persian by Shole Volpe, the, the translator um, uh, of Song of Myself for the first time into Persian, and just to see and hear what the poem feels like, sounds like in another language. And even if you only have a rudimentary uh, uh, knowledge of another language, we hope that you will take a look at the various sections of Song of Myself in that particular language and begin to think of the challenges and problems that every translator faces as he or she tries to move Song of Myself into another language. And you will see that after each section of the poem we include an introduction and afterward and questions for further thought and reflection. Ideas that we hope will be generated not only by the reading of the poem itself, but the conversation that Ed and I have been conducting on the page and here in our studio at the University of Iowa. So enjoy. For this course, we have assembled a number of online resources which we hope you will take advantage of and explore, the most important of which is the Whitman Archive, uh, co-founded by Ed Folsom and his colleagues at the University of Virginia and the University of Nebraska. And Ed, maybe you can walk us through the Whitman Archive. Yeah, uh, we'd love to have you uh, use the archive as fully as you can. Uh, it's a massive resource. There are endless tens of thousands of documents there, articles about Whitman, books about Whitman, books, all of Whitman's books in their various editions are available on the archive. Uh, you can take a tour of the archive that gives you uh, a kind of overview of, um, of what uh, uh, resources are there. Uh, and I recommend that, uh, that, that you begin there with the tour and then uh, take a look at the various sections. You have the published works, and that's where you'll find all the various editions of Leaves of Grass, six very different editions of Leaves of Grass, and Song of Myself goes through a transformation in each of those editions. It's arranged uh, uh, in uh, different formats, uh, so Whitman will sometimes have verse by verse numbered, uh, sometimes we'll move it to a section uh, structure, and we'll talk about some of that over the course of, uh, of, of our time together, but um, it is useful to know that you can go to those published works, call up the editions of Leaves of Grass, and in each edition take a look at Song of Myself as it appears there. We also have a section called In Whitman's Hand, which offers you manuscript versions of, uh, of Whitman's poetry, uh, all of the known uh, uh, manuscripts of, of Song of Myself are available there so that you can get an idea of Whitman's workshop, how he began to conceive of the poem and how it first began to emerge. There's a long biography 
on the archive that, uh, that you can read and look at to get a good sense of Whitman's life and background and what he was going through historically, biographically, culturally uh, during the times that he was revising and transforming Leaves of Grass and also revising Song of Myself. Uh, there's a section that gives you all of the portraits uh, of Whitman, photographic portraits. Uh, Whitman was a, 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 a great lover of photography. For him, it was the great democratic art. Uh, and you can watch uh, uh, Whitman evolve over the years. He was one of the very first humans to be able to look back on his life photographically and actually watch himself age. Uh, and you can, you can follow that aging process on the uh, portraits of Whitman section. There are lots of other things on the archive. Uh, explore it and have fun with it and keep coming back to it to check on how Song of Myself evolves over a lifetime. A word about the structure and the evolution of this course, which, as we have said, came out of our work on the Whitman Web, the exploration that Ed and I have made of Whitman's Song of Myself. We recorded over the course of several days a series of conversations. And just as Whitman wrote the first drafts of Song of Myself in a flush in 1854, 1855, and then spent the rest of his life revising, extending, rethinking what the poem might be all about, we have found ourselves coming back to our conversations and thinking, well, we might want to revise that, extend that. It, our thought processes seem to be evolving, don't they? They do, and, and, and I, I like the analogy with Whitman's poem. Uh, because Song of Myself originally was just one long, unbroken flow. And as Whitman kept coming back to the poem, he began to see section divisions, and he began to see ways to frame particular parts of the poem in new and exciting ways. And he kept reframing and rethinking. And so in, in one sense, we're going to reframe that set of conversations that we, we had and come back and talk our way through them, listen to ourselves, think our way through Song of Myself. And we hope that uh, what you'll find in watching this set of classroom sessions is that um, uh, you'll see a little something different in the ways the conversations initially took place and then we think through them again. It's that long process of coming to grips with a really complex poem. This is one of the ways that we know we're in the presence of a great poem, isn't it? That we keep coming back to it and thinking that we are seeing it anew because, in fact, as Whitman would tell us, we are seeing it anew. Exactly. <laughs>